The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. So said J.F. Kennedy. We know that secret societies are now having a massive influence on the world. Most people are unaware of organisations like the CFR, which is the Council for Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Club of Rome, the Bilderberg Group, the, the Bohemian Grove meetings, etc. Secret societies like the Masons are perhaps better known, but others like Skull and Bones or the Fabian Society are less well known, although equally influential. But what I want to talk about today is the Quangos and the charity foundations which are working along with the political organisations I've already mentioned to change society and one suspects to change society in, in order to bring in world government. And they're doing so by following the principles of Fabianism. Blair is a member, so is Ed Balls, and others too. Fabianism, I think, is very important indeed, and it's very dangerous, because its intention is to change society and to do so by making very small incremental changes so that the you know people don't really notice anything different happening the changes are so small so imperceptible and ominously the symbols of fabianism are the wolf in sheep's clothing you can guess why that's a symbol and it's quite frightening really that it is and the turtle because everything, of course, happens very slowly. The, in the past, um, philosophies like Leninism, for example, sought to change society by revolution, but Fabianism does so uh, by making r these small incremental changes. And I think it's far more dangerous, therefore, and very, very successful, horribly successful, as... Uh, we're going to find out in this video. Since the 1970s I've become aware that gradually and imperceptibly lots and lots of charities have sprung up. Not the usual sort of charity um, which does something practical but think tanks, so-called uh, visionary organisations. Let's start by taking a look at one of these charities, Forum for the Future it's called, um, and it claims to be a change agent for action for a sustainable world. Jonathan Porritt is the leading light in the charity and it's one of many. If you look up the words change agent in Google, you'll see the extent of it all and you have to ask yourself, change to what? you're on time. I'm V. I'm looking forward to showing you around Planopolis today. My husband works from home. He's a virtual engineer working on one of the city's desalination plants. He controls the robots who do all the important maintenance. I think he basically plays computer games for a living. <laughs> Are you ready to go? Have you got your calorie card open on your smartphone? I registered your visit with Slick Travel Corp the other day, so they've uh, allotted you a journey time to, to match mine. 
It makes so much sense, doesn't it? Switch off brain and go to work. <laughs> With this many people around, I'm glad there's a mega computer in charge. We are so lucky. Uh, our kids were allocated to school quite near my practice, so I can drop them off on the way. It saves on our calorie ration. Well, it won't be long until the little darlings get their career announcements. They've been working so hard, so I'm sure they'll get something good. N not that there's anything wrong with fixing carbon scrubbers for a living or anything. Are you hungry? Let's pop to the market as we're past. Right, what's on the menu this month? No, not meat. It's not your birthday. The Global Food Council are doing a really good job of keeping food production going. I mean, you don't get the choice you used to, but we're better off than most. I think it's probably easiest to walk from here. You barely see a car in the city centre nowadays, unless you're rich. <laughs> oh, the state knows they just aren't practical anymore. We're all trying to meet our global carbon deal. Electric bikes are so much better for getting around our neighbourhood. And why waste valuable space on car parks when you can use them to grow food? I don't care what you say, Alex. They don't deserve to live in that ghetto. They are completely disconnected. No high-speed transport system, no new internet. They miss out on jobs and many essential services, too. Oh, hi again. <laughs> what a day. I had to make an emergency visit to the Cry Freedom Ghettos. I mean, I miss my sister like mad, but I'm glad they went when they moved to New Amsterdam. They're safe from climate change on the floating city. <laughs> that must be her now. It's much easier to meet up with friends virtually now. So many cities have banned cars in central areas. Ooh, looks like she's got some juicy gossip. Well, let's ignore the girly voice and the happy clappy execution. Let's look at what's being proposed. It sounds alarmingly similar to Agenda 21 to me. Agenda 21 is the agenda for the 21st century, uh, century uh, which was written by the United Nations. To put it in a nutshell, Agenda 21 wants to imprison humans in overcrowded ghettos so that wildlife and nature can be uh, free to develop. These wildlands, as they are called, uh, will become the playground of the rich, while the poor live under a totalitarian world government. What, does, uh, what picture does this film paint that we've just seen? Well, human beings living in overcrowded districts, food to be rationed and determined by government, strictly no meat, and they give the example of potato pea pie, uh, no cars, except for the rich, of course. They'll have cars. Um, children will be allocated jobs. They won't be free to do what they choose. Um, they'll be allocated by government. And a refusal to comply will result in punishment. The example given is no internet access. And probably the worst thing of all is that having... Um, scattered families to all uh, corners of the world as a result of globalisation, uh, they're going to restrict uh, travel and they think it'll be okay because people will be able to meet up by computer screen uh, and they won't have to see each other in the flesh at all. Uh, now if that's a, a picture that you like of the future then I think you're probably very different from me. But of course, lots of people will say this is just a load of old rubbish. I'm not going to take this seriously. Well, look at all the corporations sponsoring Forum for the Future. And look back at the video I've just uh, shown you. It's sponsored by Vodafone. And remember, the rich will be free to travel in their Bentleys, no less, and you will be effectively imprisoned. Remember, too, that if you refuse to comply, you will have no internet access. And it's made clear this means no work, no means of earning a living. They see it as a form of internal exclusion. Now, the dangerous thing I see about Jonathan Porritt is that he often says things which people like me would agree with. 
and in that he's similar to many of, of these people who have formed uh, charities uh, like this with a vision. Um, their, sometimes their message is, is quite attractive until you really look at it in depth and then you see it's actually very extreme. Um, for example, J uh, Jonathan Porrett, Porrett is against pesticides. He thinks food should be organic, so do I. He talks convincingly about the dangers of nuclear power. I would agree with him on that. And in fact, he's, he's fallen out with Cameron over this, as he makes clear in his blog. Nonetheless, this video is an indication of what he really sees, the way he really sees the future, and um, therefore I think that we need to be rather concerned about this individual. So, on the one hand, we've got a mad vision of the future by the likes of John Jonathan Porritt. On the other hand, we've got Cameron visiting Japan to get advice on how to make nuclear power safe. Uh, no, you couldn't make it up. And Nicolas Sarkozy, President of France, is currently in the doghouse because he misled the French people into thinking he visited Fukushima when in fact he never got further than Tokyo. Um, but he's there too to get the Japanese to build a nuclear reactor. I think I read um, in Alsace. I actually thought they had to be near the sea, but um, the humour of the situation is that it's near the German border. And Angela Merkel is anti-nuclear power, having done an energy deal with Russia. But let's get back to the charities, and I'll tie in the politicians at the end of this video. There are so many of these charities. Um, here are two famous ones. Um, I believe that the charities don't pay tax, so it occurs to me that it's entirely possible to use these charities as a form of money laundering. Uh, politicians, for example, could become advisers and thereby legitimately receive bribes. And my husband has pointed out that uh, charities could be a very convenient parking place for the useless sons and daughters of the rich. Uh, they could be made to feel important going about their visionary work. Now, I'm not pointing to any specific charity here, I'm just point, pointing out the potential for corruption. And uh, we've got to remember that these bodies have not been elected and they are influencing society in a very big way. When you take it along with the secret societies and the big political organisations that are also secret, it is very, very worrying indeed. And here you've got the Chatham House rule. It says, uh, when a meeting or part thereof is held under the Chatham House rule, participants are free to use the information received, but neither the identity nor the affiliation of the speaker nor that of any other participant may be revealed. In other words, the uh, Chatham House is influencing society but it wants it to be completely secret and you know we need to be aware of this because it's changing our lives. Then in addition to the change agent type charities we've got quangos and they are a means of government having covert control over our lives because they are what um, uh, they say they are which is quasi-autonomous. Now Cameron pledged to get rid of these quangos and I'm going to show you some of the ones he's abolished um, for you to interpret for yourselves. I think that he's abolished certain quangos because they don't fit his agenda, but that's up to you to decide. I'll also show you some of the ones he's um, retained and the ones that he says he's uh, going to morph into something else, like the GTC, for example, which is the General Teaching Council, which most teachers uh, think has been abolished but actually it's down on the list of uh, possibly being morphed into something else. Just in case you think this is as bad as it gets I've kept the organisation called Common Purpose till last. Common Purpose is a charity which trains key personnel throughout the country, head teachers, senior police officers, local government personnel, all to the same end, the same common purpose. It's a secretive organisation and it's been analysed in great depth by Brian Gerrish. I'll leave you a link underneath. I want you to think about the potential for undermining society 
when you have a so-called training society operating behind closed doors. Here's the CEO of Common Purpose. Her name is Julia Middleton. I've just taken a video of her eyes. They give me information. I'm not going to say what that information is. I want you to look at her eyes yourself and see whether they give you any information. So that's yet another change agent style sh charity implementing the uh, techniques uh, of Fabianism. And if you look at again at the uh, symbol of Fabianism, which is uh, the, the turtle, which says, uh, when I strike, I strike hard. Just think about that for a moment. If that was uh, a group of Muslims in Bradford, uh, they would be arrested. Uh, and yet we allow this society to put out this kind of uh, logo, which is really like a, a mission statement, I think. And it's very, very dangerous indeed. We need to do something about it. So what's the position? Well, we've got large organisations like Bilderberg meeting secretly. We've got change agent style charities plotting to change our lives. We've got quangos unelected but having a huge influence on our lives. We've got secret societies like the Masons. None of these are accountable and all plotting to set up a world government in which the rich lead the life of Riley while the rest of us struggle away on food rations. So, is there any hope? Well, it may surprise you that I'm going to say yes. The apparatchiks and puppets of the elite have already started falling out. Sarkozy and Cameron have been at loggerheads. Jonathan Porritt and Cameron have fallen out, as I've already mentioned. Sarkozy will soon have a fallout with Germany in both senses if he builds a nuclear power station upwind of Germany and blowing fallout in its direction. Now, I think we'll soon be in the same situation with the elite. Uh, so far, they've been cooperating quite well, but it's not human nature to cooperate like this, especially when they're all after power. So I can't see the big players in the world uh, cooperating uh, long term. I know that uh, Russia, um, the, the wall went down rather too quickly. I, I thought it was a bit strange at the time. Uh, and there was a certain amount of cooperation, but I don't think that's going to continue. The only problem is, of course, that we will be involved if they all start squabbling. Um, so what can we do? Well, we need to stop voting because when we vote we give legitimacy to these apparatchiks who are all the same, they're all in it together. That's what Cameron meant by the phrase, we're in it together. Um, so we need to stop voting and we need to stop buying from the corporations because if we stop buying, all they can do is talk. They don't have the wherewithal to actually implement their ideas such as they are. Um, so, you know, that's the message. And finally, start talking to other people. People who listen to this video probably already are awake, but, you know, they need to start waking other people up. For example, by, by um, sharing this video with others so that they know what's going on.